Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The city of Tshwane hosted an energy summit this week, where plans to procure 1,000 megawatts of generation capacity were confirmed. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss this initiative. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this plan? Well, the main background is very chronic and intense load shedding, which I know we're in a period of reprieve, but a lot of the metropolitan councils that are big distributors of electricity and have been generators in the past have been looking at either reviving or accommodating new generation capacity in the city. So we saw um, the city of Cape Town is well advanced with their plans and they've got a request for proposal in the market and they're evaluating. And then we see that the city of Joburg's also had an energy summit and also looking at some sort of relationship with IPPs. And we've seen it literally across uh, um, uh, Itequini, all the metropolitan councils are looking at this. Uh, in the case of cities that are run by uh, uh, the opposition or the, what was the opposition, uh, the Democratic Alliance, which is now forms part of the National Government of Unity at the national level, but at the uh, Metropolitan Council level, there's also a sort of a drive to have a greater independence from ESCOM. Um, and that, that, has, that message was uh, uh, again relayed by the executive Mayor Brink uh, when at the City of Shrine's um, uh, Energy Summit this week, where they do want this greater level about a thousand megawatts of their own generation and overall they sort of uh, uh, consumers of 2,600 megawatts. Uh, so they're looking at being fairly independent from Eskom or at least diversifying their supply but doing it in a cooperative way with Eskom, doing it in a cooperative way with national government and national treasury. So that's really the big background, wanting to improve security of supply, have greater uh, control over generation in the city and uh, also the, the last leg is to try and also have more green electricity or renewable electricity in the, in the city's uh, electricity mix. What specific projects does the city have in mind? Well, the city of Schwein has had uh, power stations that have operated in the past, much like Joburg has, much like Cape Town has in the past. Uh, those are mothballed. There's the Pretoria West coal-fired power station and the Royal uh, power station. Now Pretoria West, uh, that site is old and I doubt there's any prospect of uh, returning coal fire generation to that site, but it has proximity uh, both to the load, but also most importantly in these days is to the network. So that would be a site where they're looking at a 40 year lease and looking at some sort of technology options there that could come on. And then at Royval, the view is, uh, I think it's controversial, is that that could be restarted as a, a coal-fired power station. Uh, it's got a theoretical nameplate of 300 megawatts, but it hasn't been operating for many, many years. The city claims that all the infrastructure is intact, but I think when you look under the hood, it's going to be interesting to see. And also, you know, there's a whole thing around whether you want to, as a city, where most cities are looking at greening the, uh, the economy, add coal-fired power generation into the mix right inside the city, having coal trucks coming into your city. So it's going to be a whole discussion, I think, that they, they're going to have to go through. But they do have these two assets. And I think, as, they, as the, the uh, Mayor Brink mentioned, is that the, actually the biggest asset there is this, this proximity to load and proximity to the network. And I think that's going to be key. Now, whether the uh, Royval can be restarted as a coal-fired power station, it's it's a big question what they're going to do and I think it is the correct move is to get a transaction advisor this requires it's going to be a complex transaction and to get outside help to really help them craft what they're going to do around Royval and Pretoria West and then separately they've had a request for information uh, process quite a few responses have come about more greenfield and renewable opportunities either on city land or uh, that's in also again in proximity to the grid uh, or on private land that's in proximity to the grid and they're looking at converting those into proper firm tenders. So I think that the, the RPP uh, Greenfield one, 
there's a few the view that that's possibly less complicated and that can be out to tender um, uh, you know fairly soon. The Royval and the Pretoria West one, while they they good assets in terms of proximity, as I mentioned, I think it's going to be more complicated. And they, they're looking at appointing a transaction advisor around August, and then we'll see uh, what whatever how that evolves, what the market says around technology choice, and what the market says about what's possible on those sites, and then maybe a tender will go out later. But they've set a fairly tight time frame. They want to do this by 2026, and they believe that Royval can be operating by then. Uh, that's an open question we'll have to see. What process is likely to be followed, and is the procurement likely to be attractive to IPPs? I think that's a big question. You know, when we look at uh, IPP processes that are publicly procured, uh, we've seen a very sort of staggered or uneven uh, um, sort of uptake in recent years. And uh, that relates a lot to the grid. And this way, Swan is, I think, in a good position, a sweet spot. They've got access to grid. But it's also about the guarantees uh, when you have an insolvent single buyer. <laughs> now, Eskom is the single buyer, so therefore the National Treasury has to, be, has to back up Eskom every time Eskom goes about, or the DMRE goes about procuring uh, publicly procured RPPs capacity. And here, Sichuan is not in great financial shape either. So as a single buyer, I think it's highly risky for RPPs to come into this mix purely on the basis of a, a tariff model. So this would be, there would be a tariff and they'd be remunerated through the tariff and I suppose the city would take its, its share. Uh, so I think the key to the process here is I think they have to somehow de-risk. If they want this thousand megawatts, they're going to have to find a way of de-risking this project without a treasury guarantee because that doesn't look like it's on the cards and without a city guarantee because I don't think they're in the position to do that. So I think the de-risking is going to be important and it seems it's really about providing a wheeling framework. So there are manufacturers in that uh, city, uh, large manufacturers, automotive, there's an automotive hub. Uh, they all want to green their electricity. So you'll probably find that if they have a wheeling framework in place that has a, a diverse array of off-takers, not just the city as the single buyer, that may be the, the key to unlocking this without guarantees. If they don't go that route, I think it's going to be a very hard sell. So it's going to be interesting, as you say, what is the process? Well, I think the process is that they need this transaction advisor to advise them around Roy Val and really whether that's a good idea to restart and what is the cost going to be of bringing that sort of new old coal capacity back into the mix. I don't think it's going to be a dripping roast, especially with the, the falling prices of solar panels and, uh, you know, trying to be in a sweet spot in terms of solar. I mean, residents and businesses across Swane are investing in solar already. That might even be a sweeter spot for them in terms of tapping into that embedded generation uh, allowing prosumers to, to come through through a, a more attractive feed-in tariff, that might be a better step and really focusing on your, your network. But if they're wanting to, to be generators, I think they're going to have to follow a, very, a process that's very alive to what the market needs and what RPP needs are. Uh, whether that's going to distract them from their core business and their core business is the, the network, the distribution network which isn't in great shape. And we know that around all cities around South Africa. That is a key question because that is the future. That is the heart. That is where the city can play the most role in unlocking rooftops, utility scale, and even these big sites like Royval and Pretoria West. So I think there's some way to go, but the ambition is out there and they want to go with some speed. And there seem to be appetite. There were a lot of delegates at the, at the event and uh, there seems to be a willingness to work with the city and this, there seems to be a willingness from the city to, to approach this with an open mind, which I think is very, very crucial. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.